the uh, CHS is holding the concrete. In between there is a gap that is nothing but interfacial transition zone. In that zone, the calcium hydroxide I said no, that is going and sitting. Because the CSS gel is forming, in between aggreg aggregate is there, a finer course, in between there is this gel, uh, see a calcium hydroxide is sitting. What will happen? Calcium hydroxide is the porous material. If you give compression, compression, what will happen? The porous material first cracks. So there is an initiation point for concrete cracking. So if you are attacking with your porcelanic material or nano material or bio material of that CS, CH, calcium hydroxide, you will get ultimately a good concrete. The permeability can be reduced, the calcium hydroxide can be utilized. Then, that's what I said, the zone, uh, zone of bonding between cement paste and aggregate, porosity of the paste as well as the proportion of the calcium hydroxide in the zone is considerably higher. Because that is getting deposited there only. This zone forms a weak link in concrete and there is a usually site for first occurrence of uh, cracking. There only cracking initiates. Provided, when you are, for example, if you beam testing, if you are doing, crack you can see nakedly after <coughs> crack come to the surface. But what will happen? Initially the crack is formed inside the aggregates or in the near the reinforcement. Near the reinforcement, it has happened. Then visibly you can see. Why okay. and RCC, how do you find the corrosion? Any of you? What will happen? Why the concrete uh, we are putting a very good steel inside? Why it is corroding? How does it corrode? You can ask, no? Because we have completely put the cover concrete, completely covered, uh, totally reinforcement, in spite of reinforcement is corroding. Why? Again, permeable concrete. Concrete is permitting the gases, gas ingress inside the concrete, that is going into the attack the reinforcement. So reinforcement is getting corroded, what will become? That is ferrous alloy. That is corroded means that will form ferrous oxide. Once the oxidation is happening, what will happen? The steel is bulging. So steel is bulging, 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 then it, because it has to accommodate inside the concrete, it is cracking. So that is visible crack. So that is also culprit is calcium hydroxide. To some extent the calcium chloride forming that is maybe a active as a passive layer. Active layer as well as passive layer. So corrosion protection also helping you by using supplementary cement ACS material. You can definitely prolong this uh, uh, time for durable. You can get a durable concrete. So always you have to think of the diatizer zone and bonding close to the reinforcement. Whatever you do, if the concrete is not good, reinforcement cannot survive, even you can use stainless steel. It cannot affect. So if you have play with the concrete only, reinforcement can protect. Till that time nothing will happen. Because this is a hundred years old only. Concrete is under day, ten decades. Cement is ten decades only. But we have to play a lot. You have to play a lot and change something different. Yeah, these are all materials of interest, nano silica, nano alumina, nano calcium carbonate, these are all can be used. And CNT, there is another material called carbon nanotubes or carbon nanofibers. These nanofibers we are adding in the concrete, but I am sure that it is a very costly material. If you are adding that, that will reinforcement of local, local reinforcement. Other than bars or something. Every concreting there is a local reinforcement, that bonding can be together because the tensile strength of the fibers is enormous. Enormous is there, either fiber or tube. That is more of uh, that study. Another way we can go for bio materials, which we call it as bio concrete. See what will happen? This material is sand, when adding bacterium or culture and this, then it becomes sandstone. You see that you might have seen that uh, river banks, so water is flowing, but the river banks is not getting affected. Why? What is there in that river bank? Either rock, otherwise clay, clay minerals, correct? So clay minerals inside, bacteriums are there, that bacteria are holding, they are producing calcium carbonate. 
that is called we call it as calcite producing bacteria. They are holding, they are filling the pores in the bank. So water, whatever the force it goes, the bank is not get eroded. That was the idea, mimicking the nature, mimicking the nature. So they are thinking of something. That's what is happening. So when you are sending the concrete uh, bacterium into the concrete, what it is trying to go on, it is go and penetrate into the concrete everywhere and uh, filling the pores. Because I am always talking about the pores. Pores, what is the cause behind the pores, how the pores is getting filled. Either using supplementary material, otherwise using bacteria or nano or whatever. Because that is the culprit for crack initiation. So that is attack, if you are attacking a concrete, you can get a good concrete. So this is a procedure for synthesizing. We have done it in our laboratory, synthesized. There are two types of bacteria. One I have procured from the laboratory, our sister laboratory. Other one, this bacteria, I have taken it from the existing concrete. Concrete is having bacteria. I have isolated the bacteria. That way I, I named it. I only named it CS. CSIRACRC1. That's what, that is the first bacteria, Bacillus cerisus. That has been registered in the bacteria bank. That's available. That bacteria is available in concrete. That I have picked up, grown. There is a CLS that has been grown. In a different way, these are all different ways they are grown. And adding that culture in place of water, I, what I get is here, you can improve strength. Much about 29% improvement in strength in concrete. So using that bacteria that is procured from other lab. Whereas existing concrete, it gives 38% strength improvement. The point, uh, but it's a tedious process. Tedious process. We have to synthesize the bacteria, bacteria growth, culture, everything to attain it. Then only really you get this much. This is also another way. This way you have to see how the calcium secretion are coming out. You can see here. Crystals are formed by bacteria. These bacteria are filling the pores. So pores we are filling. You are not allowing the gases to ingress. Okay, another study you see how we are healing the crack. This is a crack, okay, and then adding bacteria, injecting bacteria into that that is getting formed, spilled. So durability also increase. Durability also increase. So so far I talked about various way of materials utilization, either by using billet cement, otherwise you can go for. Uh, nano biomaterial or geopolymer or uh, so many things we have discussed but so far we have I have set so many equipments x-ray diffraction x-ray fluorescence thermogravimetry and all so we have to take the material select the material identify the material of any industry and then if you want to use it as a supplementary material for your cement replacement you have to do some processing then only you can succeed Simply adding some material into your concrete, please don't make your concrete dumping yard or garbage bin. With the reasoning only, you have to use it. Not just like that, take it. How to use it? How to find it? If I am giving a packet of material, what it contains, whether it is suitable for me, you have to check with these details. Before, during, after. Before utilizing, you have to do what it is content, whether it is suitable. That's what I said, ASTM standard. We have to have either silicious or aluminosilicious. If it is there or not, check it first and then use it. To using it, that time what is happening during the process, whether it is useful for art, it is coming and anything, you have to check. And then final product also you have to check by using these techniques. X-ray diffraction, these are atomic scale radiation that can be used we can get, of course, solids we can classify to two. One is crystalline, another one is amorphous. Crystalline is not so reactive, amorphous is reactive. The crystalline material means it is having a regular periodic arrangements of atoms or molecules of composite as well also. They are having a regular pattern, whereas amorphous material doesn't have any regular structure. Please note that 
our CSH, calcium silicate hydride and NASH, NASH, both are amorphous. That cannot be predicted by using any material, any tools. Okay. Simple example. This is crystalline. This is amorphous. It can be taken out very easily. This is bit time is there. So crystalline has regular pattern. Amorphous is distracted pattern. That can be easily get dissociated. Fly ash is having more than 61st amorphous. So it is highly reactive material. Rest of the material are dump, dead moss. You know, ISA 318, it prescribes fly ash can be utilized only 35% maximum of. Why? Why not we can use 50%? Is it possible? If you use 50%, whether it is, uh, the, the, sorry, the standard says this, you we have to think why it is not permitting to use more than 30%. Silica of you, you cannot supposed to use more than 5 to 8%. Of course, it is not been allowed to use nowadays because of the fineness. fineness. But eight, 5 to 8 only can be used. Why? So, are any of you think of that? Why beyond 35% cannot go? Methaji has gone in Canada, that is gone up to 50% only maximum. But reason he has given something different. So, 50, 30, more than 30 percent fly ash cannot be used. You know, fly ash is having aluminosilices, whereas calcium hydroxide is come out is less quantity only. Less quantity only. So, that only is reacting. The rest of the fly ash will not react with anything, anybody. It is simply lying. Dead mass only. So, maximum of 30 percent you can use it. That is the reason we get Okay, likewise, fly, silica of also, because it is full of silicious, it can react with the calcium hydroxide. So, silica of also, we have a restriction. Okay, whereas GGPS, it is another way called as hydraulic cement. GGPS is a hydraulic cement. That itself having a hydraulic in nature. That itself, but of course not completely, but it itself, itself a binding material. Okay, that data is, this is a X-ray fly ash. This is a fly ash X-ray, this one. We have to do something <coughs> what it contains. This molite is nothing but SaO2 Al2O3. What is is SaO2? This way you have to pick, identify and match it. <coughs> this I already showed how it is XRD. This is a geopolymer XRD. This is fly ash. After mixing with the NaSH, it will perform like this. X-ray fluorescent, another tool to identify the oxide composition. I said that box compound as well as the oxide composition can be identified by this. These are all methods how to prepare it. The scanning electron microscope, which is giving the topography or morphology of the structure. See here, the first picture is fly ash. <coughs> Please note that technically I tell when you are using fly ash, it gains later day strength, even after a year. Later day strength. Okay, the reason began is the calcium, tricalcium silicate and dicalcium silicate should react first and then only calcium hydroxide is forming, then our metaplayas is reacting. So that is what it is like giving later day strength. At the same time, if you use fly ash, it is more workable concrete. What is the reason? When you are adding fly ash, water content can be reduced. If you water to binder ratio reducing, you will, uh, concrete is gaining more strength. Why fly ash is giving more workable? That's the reason. It is a ball slide structure. That is giving ball bearing effect. That is sliding effect. So that's what the work, uh, fly ash we are adding. It is sliding. So if you have a minimum of slump of 100 mm, that's fine. You can stop it. Fly ash content, you can stop it. That will give you that much. So water content, you can always reduce. So you get a good concrete. Because strength will improve. This is a structure of CSH, cluster, there is no structure, this is a clear structure, here it is not so. Another study we have attempted, this is a fly ash, this is a calcium silicate hydrate, I add it together and with water and heat it to some extent, CSH is forming. Mind that, there is no cement here, there is no cement here, provided fly ash with the CSH, both are industrial waste by products. I added with the water and the heating, I, CSH is forming. 
So another way of thinking. Whether completely aerodic material, other than uh, geopolymer, other than supplementary material, totally OPC can be replaced by this reaction. This has been published in the ACA, ACA journal. I don't know, I didn't put the reference. <coughs> the reaction kinetics are happening like this. This is also another way of producing CSH. Okay? This is another tool. One can identify the parent material, whatever you are giving, that can be taken up. See, this is what the spectrum of C3S, C2S, C3A and the C4A. They are giving the vibration spectroscopy. Because many people are uh, getting dull because of this, because of deviating the subject, etc. This is all the, uh, uh, the geopolymer, yes. Geopolymer and its bonding. So once geopolymer is formed or not, we can confirm with this, using this spectrum. In thermogravimetry, another method, another tool, this I already showed. This also already showed. This is what I want to spend another five minutes. You can get what? See here. Isothermal conduction colorimetry. By this study, I am coming to end bar. Huh? Okay. Uh, using this study, you can get workable setting time and strength gain. Okay. There was a model proposed by Call Matrix that gives the this picture itself. You can find it strength. Another study. You can see here. This is flash replacement of some level up to 70. There is no reason behind, just for this study we have done it. Up to 70% replacement. Likewise, 60% GGBS. Have you noticed any difference between these two pictures? I, I hope I remember, I told you, this period is called dormant period. This period is dormant period. And this is setting time, initial and final. And then strength part I will come later. See here, when I add fly ash, it has come down. Energy has been evolved, heat energy is coming down. At the same time, the dormant period is increasing. So this picture is giving workable concrete. When you are going for 70% replacement of fly ash, the dormant period is increasing, setting time also increasing. But beyond the standard. Our standard is 10 hours, it is going beyond. That's what we cannot use it. So it is a workable concrete. Setting also takes more time if you replace. Whereas if you go for 30 to 35 percent, that is allowable limit. First three gram. That is for play ash. When you go for GGBS, any percentage if you change, it is more stiff. It's not workable. Have you experienced with the GGBS? It is more stiff and set very fast. From this graph you can find these two properties, whether it is workable, whether it is stiff fast, setting fast or not. With this graph, you can find it. And this one is gives the energy evolved. Early stage, how much energy is evolved? Joules per second, how much is coming out? We can see, this is for given 200. From this, this is also, also I told a long time back, this is what you have to find. What is that initial setting time, final setting time? This is a C3S peak, this is C3A peak. This is all coming out. This is what? I am coming to the end. That the energy, whatever you are getting, that you can extrapolate. This is a model I have been given. If, you are, if at all you get, sorry, if at all you get this much uh, energy, 300 means the strength will be automatically, you will come to know from this model. So you don't recruit a cast even. Just to doing heat of hydration, how much energy you are getting out of it by this model. But you have to work for this, getting this model, but do a lot of trial and error, get the things out of it, how much energy is coming, each batch of cement is differs. So every batch you have to find what how much energy is coming out and then trying to fix it this. You will get, without doing anything, that is what I said, optimize the next design by using this technique. Okay? With this, I come to conclusion. I hope you understand some of the bits in information. Thank you. Please give your suggestions, comments, questions, anything. I'll be happy. Yes, I used to interact with many students. Always. Just whatever the question, no problem. Any basics, no doubt. You can ask. Yes, sir. Please.
repeat the question. So in India, we use, say, for example, lignite RP as the major materials for uh, thermal power, yes, uh, fire. Uh, so we, that contains a lot of impurities, especially, say, for example, mercury and other things. And uh, even some of the Western nations which use the high-quality coal, for example, imported coal from you know, Brazil, Australia, the high-quality coal, uh, for thermal power plants, they use that, but they don't use uh, that amount of uh, fly ash. Okay. For the reasons that I told, it has a lot of mercury, mercury yes. content, and many a times with the fly ash is being used. Uh, you know, we don't have in India, for example, that uh, flue gas desulfurization. Of course. Right? So, in Western nations, they have adopted flue gas. Another that, then it will not come out, yes. Right. So, what happens is that, uh, that uh, before it goes to the stack and chimney, the uh, entire thing is captured and then it is turned into plaster of Paris. And then the plaster of Paris is then used as a calcium silicate boards, boards uh, used for housing construction. Okay, but the problem there is that uh, they are not able to use it properly because of the amount of mercury content. Now we are using this uh, fly ash. So we are talking about strength, we are talking about stiffness, we are talking about setting time. But we are not talking about the safety of use of those fly ash. I especially when used in construction, simply because most of the time it is used for plastering. The main reason it is used for plastering is that uh, you know it is easy, workable, workable yes. gives a smooth finish, things like that. So what is your take on it? Um, first of all, if you want to categorize uh, fly ash of uh, coals of India and abroad, Indian coal is very inefficient. So efficiency is only 5, 50 to 60 percent. Rest are all dumped. That is what we have to do for your bottom ash or fly ash. We have to check the composition. So mercury content will not be there in Indian coal. This one. Indian coal, we don't find any gas. Bottom ash, we have to check. That is not there. Mercury content, of course, trace element analysis is must for anything. Not only mercury, there are many. I don't want to disclose that. Uh, okay, I cannot say. Because we have taken a BTPC project. We cannot say. There are some issues. That cannot be used. But fly ash is having only this. It is not carrying any mercury. Since it is a material, denser material, provided, please note that if you want to use bottom ash as a sand replacement, you have to be very careful. You have to be very careful. Yes, sir. Yeah, that's why students are silent. I am expecting students' questions. I will be eager to answer. Anything? Any doubts? Because we have another 10, 5 minutes time, I think. Another lecture is 10.30 only. Yes, sir. No questions. So, that means my lecture is very clear. Yeah, please, please. Attempt. Make an attempt. Make an attempt. It's a good attempt. That's what I have done in for Geo Polymer, no? Uh, 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 fly ash will uh, increase the setting time uh, under workability. Okay. GGBs will do it in reverse. Can True. we use both to nullify it? Yes. Can be. Attempt. I have not done it. I have done it for geopolymer. I got a, because geopolymer another issue is set very fast. Sets very fast. So prolong it, we have to add uh, fly ash more. That's why they, they have used only fly ash. Because 